Lord Templeman's judgment in Street and Mountford was an authoritative restatement of the defining characteristics of a lease. Mr. Street entered into an agreement under which Mrs. Mountford would, as Mr. Street conceded, have exclusive possession of two, room, two rooms in a property owned by Mr. Street. The agreement described itself as a license. It ended with a clause declaring that the parties did not intend to create a lease. Mrs. Mountford applied for the registration of a fair rent under the Rent Acts. Mr. Street sought a declaration that Mrs. Mountford was a licensee. The House of Lords, Lord Templeman giving the main judgment, held that Mrs. Mountford was a tenant, since the agreement provided for her to have exclusive possession for a term and at a rent. Lord Templeman explained the essential elements of a lease are exclusive possession and certainty of term. This was consistent with nearly all previous authority in England and in other jurisdictions. To say that occupation by a tenant is exclusive possession, while that of a licensee is not, is to invite the accusation of circular reasoning, or of simply replacing one term with another without explaining either. Lord Templeman explained that a tenant is one who, under the terms of the lease, has the control rights associated with ownership. In particular, the tenant has the right to exclude others, including the landlord. The agreement in, in Street described itself as a licence. At the foot of the agreement was the following declaration made by Mrs. Mountford. I understand and accept that a licence in the above form does not, and is not intended to give me a tenancy protected under the Rent Acts. Lord Templeman, leaves, Lord Templeman leaves no room for misunderstanding on the question as to the importance of labels. He says that it's entirely a question of whether, properly construed, the agreement offered exclusive possession for a certain term. The parties cannot, he said, turn a tenancy into a licence merely by calling it one. Lord Templeman's understanding, expressed several times in the judgment, is that the lease is always an estate in land. In the later House of Lords judgment of, in um, Bruton and London and Quadrant Housing Trust, however, the House of Lords decided that the lease need not be an estate in land. They decided that once there's an agreement that offers exclusive possession for a term, then a lease has been created. This is true even though the landlord has no estate in land, is himself a licensee, for example. Paradoxically, a literal reading of Street has resulted, in the eyes of some commentators at least, in a blurring of the distinction between the lease and the contractual license. The paradox is that Lord Templeman had insisted that the grant of exclusive possession for a term would be the features that would distinguish the lease, an estate in land, from the contractual license, not an estate in land. Lord Templeman states that while exclusive possession is an essential element of a lease, an occupier with exclusive possession is not necessarily a tenant. First, there can be informal arrangements where a landlord, where a landowner allows someone else, perhaps a family member or friend, to occupy property, but where there's no contractual intent. Then there are those cases where the occupier is present on the land on behalf of some third party. Lord Templeman offers the example of an employee who comes into the employer's property for the better performance of his duties. One might think of an old-fashioned lighthouse keeper, for example. Here, the employee appears to have exclusive possession, but the possession is actually that of the employer.